kinds of theorems, no free lunch theorems, for example, in, in uh, learning theory that tell us that without structure, you can't learn anything, essentially. But you can't learn anything without a ridiculously large amount of training samples. And so necessarily, we need to put structure to be able to learn anything in a reasonable amount of uh, interactions with the world. Um, so the first thing I should say is that this is probably something we're going to agree on, uh, which is that uh, prior structure is necessary. Um, something we may or may not agree on is that it's a necessary evil, in the sense that, uh, of course, there's all kinds of theorems, no free lunch theorems, for example, in, in uh, learning theory that tell us that without structure, you can't learn anything, essentially. But you can't learn anything without a ridiculously large amount of training samples. And so necessarily, we need to put structure to be able to learn anything in a reasonable amount of uh, interactions with the world. Um, that said, the, the history of pattern recognition, AI more generally, but uh, more specifically pattern recognition, speech recognition, for example, handwriting, computer vision, has been one where the amount of prior structure in our systems has been shrinking and shrinking more and more. And that has been a consequence of the fact that our data sets have been increasing in size. And so there is no absolute statement we can make about how much prior structure we need, because that depends on how much data we authorize ourselves to use. So if we, put in, if we put ourselves in the context of either supervised learning or reinforcement learning, where essentially the type of feedback that the machine gets is directly related to the task it's supposed to, make, to, uh, uh, to achieve, um, then the, you know, clearly there is something called the sample complexity of, uh, of uh, uh, a task or a, a particular machine. And you, know, you will need a particular number of, of samples for the machine to be able to learn a particular task. And the more specialized the machine is, the fewer samples uh, you will need. On the other hand, the more likely it is that the structure you put in the machine is wrong. And in fact, what's, uh, what's happened over the last several decades uh, the reason why people in speech recognition, handwriting, etc., have been putting less and less prior structure in the systems is because any structure you put in, you make an assumption about the nature of the data, and that assumption ten generally tends to be wrong for a small percentage of the data that limits the minimum error rate you can get. Um, so uh, as we get more data, more supervised data, more labeled data, uh, or as we get more powerful machines that, you know, um, which, you know, allow them to interact, uh, to do more trials for learning a particular task, uh, the amount of structure we need becomes less and less uh, prominent. Now, so that's kind of one side of the, kind of a historical perspective on, you know, the amount of structure kind of diminishing. Now, of course, you know, things like commercial nets is actually all about structure. So, uh, obviously, I'm not against uh, structure, but uh, it's a necessary, you know, necessary evil for the reason I just mentioned, which is that every, every structure you put in, you, you make assumption that might turn out to be wrong. Now, um, at any particular point in, in history for the kind of techniques that we have access to, we might need to put structure so as to get results um, in a relatively short term. 
And that structure may turn out to be useless 5, 10, 20 years later when machines become more powerful, more data is available, new techniques are invented, and the structure may become less, uh, less, uh, less useful. And so it's difficult to make an absolute statement about this. Now, so what is the situation today? Like how much structure, structure do, do we need today? And in one area where um, I think we might be agreeing on is where, where uh, you know, deep learning and machine learning in general have kind of, uh, uh, are trying to push the frontier but are limited at the moment is the area uh, where, where you can m marry machine learning with reasoning. So we don't have really good techniques so far. There's a lot of people working on it, including Chris, on uh, you know, how you get machines to, to reason, not just perceive, not just arrive at a result with a finite you know, number of steps, but kind of you know, think about something for, for a while. Uh, um, so how, how, how do you marry you know, inference and, uh, and learning? Um, and then I think there is another uh, question, which is possibly the a way to get out of the conundrum, uh, which is not learning, not training a machine for a particular task, but training a machine to just learn how the world works and then fine tuning it to a particular task afterwards. And I think that's the kind of learning that humans and animals do. And that's one of the things I'm very interested in at the moment. The question of structure there is a completely different one. <laughs>